This past Sunday, Roger Federer and Andy Roddick squared off in the finals of Wimbledon, and they played an epic match, an all-time match, and Federer pulled it out 16-14 in the fifth set, breaking Andy for the very first time in the match. Now, to be honest, I thought Federer was just going to coast to his 15th Grand Slam final. I didn't think it was going to be that close. He had pretty much owned Roddick in past Grand Slam matches. But Roddick did a couple things that made the match so close, and he did a couple things that almost allowed him to take the title away from Federer. First is he served a high percentage, and that's always important for Roddick, but it's not the whole story. He's, heard, he's served a high percentage against Federer in the past and still gotten rocked. I thought the difference in the match was how Andy moved and how he hit his backhand. Both his movement and his backhand were better than they had been in the past, and it allowed him to neutralize some of the things Federer did, and it allowed him to stay on offense more often. So what exactly was Andy doing differently? How was his movement helping him on his backhand side? And how was his placement a little bit different? Because it was the placement of his backhand that really made the difference. Now, before we go any further, let me talk about these icons. There's been some confusion about them. The circle represents the player's body. The stick coming out represents the side of the body that they're hitting the tennis ball on. So this is not a tennis racket. This is player's body, and here's the stick. So for a righty, this would be a backhand, and this would be a forehand. So with that in mind, let's say that this is Andy Roddick, and then we have Roger Federer down here. And because Roddick's movement in the past wasn't as good as it was now, and his backhand wasn't as good, Federer would really exploit Roddick's backhand by mixing up the depth of his shots and the spin. This shot in particular, right here, he would hit a slice backhand. Roddick would struggle often to get up to it. And because he wasn't always in the best position and his placement wasn't great, he would put the ball more or less in a position where Federer could attack it. Federer would typically move around this ball and hit a forehand, maybe into the open court, maybe out wide, whatever. But in any event, he would be in control of this point. What Roddick's improved movement allowed him to do was neutralize the depth and the angles that Federer hit off his backhand side. So if Roddick was hitting the ball here, he'd be able to get up to it and then recover back and then maybe move back a little bit for a deeper ball. And he was keeping the ball out of this area of the court on his backhand. So in other words, he was able to keep it over here to Federer's backhand, or he was able on occasion to crank it down the line. And by having this shot in his arsenal, this down the line shot, Federer wasn't able to cheat over as much trying to get around to maybe an inside out or an inside in forehand. So it forced Federer to be, to be a little bit more honest. He couldn't cheat over as much because he had to worry about this shot because Roddick was hitting it so effectively. And because of that, more, more rallies stayed neutral and Roddick had more opportunities to attack. Despite Andy's improved backhand and his improved movement, which allowed him to hit his backhand better, he wasn't quite able to get over the hump. He wasn't able to take out Roger. And in my opinion, there was a particular shot that was holding Andy back. It was a shot that allowed Federer to win a lot of free points. My question to y'all is, what was that shot? Now, my answer to this question is on our website, fuzzyyellowballs.com. And if you're watching this video on our website, my answer is directly below this video. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description to this video that will take you to my answer. But before y'all watch it, please post in the comments below and let me know what you think that particular shot was that held Andy back, that prevented him from winning his first Wimbledon crown.